In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of perception by learning about how we perceive depth, that is, how we engage in depth perception. Now, to perceive depth, we as humans rely on a combination of two different types of cues that tell us about the depth of what we're looking at. There are monocular depth cues and binocular depth cues. Let's break down each of those terms. Ocular simply means eye, mono means one, and bi translates to two. So monocular depth cues mean depth cues that only require one eye to see. Binocular depth cues are depth cues that require both eyes. I'm going to spend the rest of this video telling you about the various monocular depth cues, there are several, and both of the binocular depth cues in turn. Let's start with the monocular depth cues. So the first one is relative size. All else being equal, more distant objects tend to look smaller than objects that are closer to us. Let's look at this scene of a busy traffic-filled highway. Uh, I get stressed just looking at this, I don't know about you, uh, to illustrate here. So take a look at this Lexus over here, and maybe this car right here. Look at how much of our visual field, how much space that these two cars take up. These cars are very close to us, so relatively their size is much bigger. Take a look at some of these cars that are further out in the background. They take up very little space on our visual field. Our brain uses this information to say those objects, those cars must be further out because they take up less space on our visual fields. Next we have texture gradient. Object textures become less apparent farther away. Close up, object textures are very apparent. Again, let's take a look at a picture to illustrate. Focus your attention first on some of the flowers and grass that are very close to you. Some of these over here, maybe this area, this guy right here. Look at how detailed everything is, how much texture, the boundaries between objects are very clear and well-defined. You can tell uh, a lot about the color of the different objects and they don't all blend together. But now focus your attention further out onto some of these plants and flowers and grass over here. Look at how everything just kind of blends together. A lot of the textures, a lot of the detail is lost. Again, your brain takes into account this information. It says, okay, the further out I'm looking, the less uh, textures I'll be able to see, and it uses this information to, again, judge depth. Next, we have interposition. And at this point, I want to pause to remind you, what are we looking at? These are all monocular depth cues, meaning you can do this with just one eye. So if you were to cover up one of your eyes, you could still pick up on all of the cues that I'm talking about. Interposition is the idea that if object A is blocking our view of object B, this must mean that object A is closer to us than object B. Interposition goes by another name, which is known by uh, occlusion, meaning, uh, you know, objects can occlude one another, and that tells us about which object is in front or behind of the other object. You can look at this very simple scene right here of three different objects. We have a blue moon, we have a green rectangle, and a red star. And I can ask the simple question, and again, you can cover your eye and you'd probably still get this question right, hopefully, which of these three objects is closest to you? Well, hopefully you said, or at least thought, the red star, right? That's in front, nothing is blocking it, nothing is occluding it. Behind that would be what? What's behind the red star? Well, probably the green rectangle, right? And then the blue moon in the back because the green rectangle is in front of that blue moon. Okay, that's interposition, pretty simple to do. Next, we have the monocular depth cue of linear perspective. This one's a little bit different, but again, you've experienced this. Parallel lines tend to converge as distance increases. Now, they don't actually converge. Parallel lines, by definition, never touch. Converge means they come together, they touch eventually, right? But the key is that they appear from our perspective like they do converge over great distances, eventually meeting at what we call a vanishing point. Let's take a look at this railroad track here as sort of an illustration, because this is a great example. First of all, railroad tracks are parallel lines, right? That would be very problematic for the uh, trains on these railroad tracks if they were not parallel lines. Uh, but notice they converge as you go out into the distance. These lines tend to come together. Notice too, there's a vanishing point. Very far out into the horizon, into the distance, you kind of, it looks like those two lines touch one another and they don't look parallel anymore. You can also notice that the distance between the two parallel lines is very far up close, 
but very far out, the distance between the two parallel lines is very small, very close together. So again, your brain looks at that, it takes into account that information instantaneously to judge depth. It knows based on all of these different factors, in addition to other ones like texture, for example, notice the object's uh, textures being very detailed up here in front and very not detailed the further out you go. So your brain looks at all of this, takes all this into account and says, okay, all of this must be further out, all of this must be closer. Next, we have height in plane. This is another simple one that you probably never have thought of before, but again, you've encountered on a daily basis. Distant objects tend to appear higher on our visual fields than closer objects. Let's quickly illustrate with this uh, very nice scene as well. So notice this pole, right? This uh, pole, this part of this fence, and notice this tree. This tree, or group of trees, or bush, or whatever you want to call this, this tree is higher on our visual plane than this pole. Therefore, we know that the tree is further away from us. And finally, our last monocular depth cue, light and shadow. This is simple, the idea that objects cast shadows, and those shadows tell us all sorts of things about their three-dimensional shape. And from that information given to us by those shadows, we can judge depth. We can judge all sorts of things. We get a lot of information just from that. Look at this scene here. There's just literally light and shadow and almost everything else has been factored out. There's no color, nothing like that, at least not in a useful way. And yet we can really judge the depth of this object. All right, those are your monocular depth cues. You can do those with one eye. Binocular depth cues require two eyes. So if you were to cover one of your eyes, you literally could not use the information of these different binocular depth cues to judge depth. So the first is called binocular disparity. Because our two eyes are offset, they produce two different images. Now, you don't experience two different images because your brain puts that stuff together into one meaningful sort of, um, you know, not disjointed experience. You experience the world as if you're filming with a video camera, but that's not how it is at all. In reality, your brain gets two different images. We aren't cyclopses, right? Our eyes are offset. They aren't on top of one another. So. Here's how your brain uses that information in a really clever way. Looking at the disparity between those two images can tell you how far away the object is. Very large disparities between your two eyes, between the images your two eyes are producing, I should say, mean that the object is much closer. An object very far out will not produce much of a disparity at all. Here's an easy way to illustrate this, a demonstration I encourage you to do, it'll just take a second. Take your hand and give yourself like a thumbs up, first of all, okay? Great confidence booster, but also part of the demonstration. So give yourself a thumbs up and now extend your arm away from your face as far as you possibly can, okay? So you're, you're looking right at your thumb as far as you can get it away from your face. Now, uh, sort of alternate closing one eye and then the other. So close your left eye and you're looking out your right and then switch. Right eye is closed, now you're looking out your left and switch back and forth really quickly, right? you'll see that your thumb bounces back and forth a tiny bit. Now what I want you to do is take your thumb and put it really close to your face, as close as you can get it to where you can still focus or fixate on your thumb, so where you can still see it without it just being a big blur. So look at your thumb now very close to your face, and again, alternate closing your different eyes. You'll see that your thumb jumps around a ton. Again, your brain uses that information. It says, okay, it's jumping around a ton. This must be closer to me. When it's further away, it doesn't jump around at all, or very little, I should say, so it must be farther away. Again, you need two eyes in order to do that. Last but not least, we have the binocular depth cue of convergence. This one's a little bit different and I think really interesting. So you may have noticed when you took your thumb and brought it closer to you, if you participated in that demonstration, great job if you did, if you took your thumb and put it closer to you, you probably noticed that you felt a little bit of pressure in your eyes. In reality, what happened as you brought your thumb very close in front of your face is that your eyes started to converge. They, in order to fixate on your thumb, they have to uh, sort of come together. Uh, this is what you're seeing on the right-hand side of the screen, for example. If you're focusing on something close to your, uh, close to your face, your eyes have to converge. If you're looking at something very far away, your eyes don't really have to converge. Now, your brain, again, uses that information. It judges the pressure that you're, you're feeling physically in your eyes. If you fixate on something really close, you feel some pressure and your eyes converge and your brain takes into account all of that information to say, if I'm converging a lot, the object is very close to me. If I'm not converging at all, the object must be very far away.
Now, as a final note, there's a lot of different cues. Hopefully you found these interesting. I think they're fascinating that our brains just do this without us asking. It's just an automatic thing uh, that we do from a very young age. But what I want to mention is that all of these different depth cues, both monocular and if you have two eyes, the binocular depth cues as well, are being used in conjunction at the same time.